Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about arithmetic with fractions. We're going to start by showing you how to multiply and divide fractions first. Weirdly, this is actually easier than addition and subtraction. Turns out that multiplication is about as straightforward as you can get. To multiply a over b by c over d, the fraction you get in return is a times c over b times d. So all you really have to do is just multiply across. Numerator times numerator over denominator times denominator. Division is pretty straightforward as well. If I have a over b divided by c over d, what I need to do is change this into a multiplication problem. How I do that is I leave a over b as it is, but I take c over d and I flip that fraction upside down, change the division sign to a multiplication sign, and then get the new problem a over b times d over c and then multiply across to get a times d over b times c. So again, the trick is to take the fraction that is on the right, flip it upside down, and switch division to multiplication, and then just multiply. And that's how you divide fractions. Let's look at some examples. First, consider the fraction multiplication 4 over 12 times 4 over 7. Multiplying across gives me 4 times 4 over 12 times 7, which simplifies to 16 over 84, which simplifies further to 4 over 21 when I delete the common factor of 4 in the numerator and the denominator. For our next example, consider the division of 2 over 7 by 3 over 4. Remember with division, we fix the fraction on the left and flip the fraction on the right and change division to multiplication. Doing so gives us 2 over 7 times 4 over 3, which comes out to 8 over 21. Since 8 and 21 don't share common factors, we're done. For our last example, consider 1 over 2 divided by 3 over 11 times 12 over 13. So we have to think about how to start first because we have two operations happening. It's the order of operations here that tell us what to do next. Recall that in the order of operations, multiplication and division will happen from left to right. So in this problem, we will divide first because division is to the left of multiplication in the setting, and we proceed like so. Dividing 1 half by 3 elevenths gives us 1 half times 11 over 3, quantity times 12 over 13. The same rules of fractional multiplication still apply, so we just multiply across to get 1 times 11 times 12 over 2 times 3 times 13. This will give us 132 over 78, which simplifies to 22 over 13 once we cancel out the common factor of 6. Now let's talk about fractional addition and subtraction. We essentially get two cases. In the first case, we look at when the denominators of our different fractions match. We call these common denominators. So when a over b plus c over b have common denominators, we keep the denominator the same and then add the entries in the top to get a plus c over b. The second case is when the denominators in our different fractions are not the same. In other words, when they do not have common denominators. So given a plus b over c plus d, we need to sort of force common denominators to be present. You might have heard the term find a common denominator before, so that's exactly what we're going to do. The basic idea is we're going to change the way each fraction is written without changing its original value. Remember that if I multiply a number by 1, its value doesn't change. And also, remember that any non-zero number divided by itself is equal to 1. So I'm going to take a over b and multiply it by d over d, the denominator from the fraction on the right. I'm also going to multiply c over d by b over b, the denominator from the fraction on the left. Again, since d over d and b over b are both equal to 1, I haven't changed the value of either of my fractions. But once I start multiplying, I'm going to change the way these fractions look. Multiplying across in each product gives me AD over BD plus BC over BD. I'm back to case 1, so I can add my fraction like this. So at the end of the day, A over B plus C over D equals AD plus BC over BD. You can try memorizing this as a formula if you really want to, but it's easier to just go through the motions of multiplying each fraction on the left and right by the denominators over themselves of the other fraction. The setup works exactly the same if you're dealing with subtraction. 
Let's look at some examples. Compute 1 half plus 1 third. Going through, I'm going to multiply 1 half by 3 over 3 and 1 third by 2 over 2. Again, I take the denominator of the other fraction, create the fraction of that denominator over itself, and then multiply it in. One step of simplification gives me 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6, and now since I have common denominators, I can add to get 5 over 6 as my final answer. In our next example, consider 3 halves minus 11 fourths. I can follow the exact steps like I did previously, but there is a shortcut that I can take here. This kind of shortcut happens anytime I see one denominator being the multiple of another. In our case, since 2 is a multiple of 4, we can do this process a little bit differently. Instead of proceeding like I did in the first example, I'm going to multiply 3 halves here by 2 over 2 because 2 times 2 is equal to 4, and I'm not going to touch the other fraction. Multiplying through, I get 6 over 4 minus 11 fourths. Subtracting across, I get an answer of negative 5 over 4, and whenever I have a negative sign showing up in exactly one of the numerator or denominator spot, I just pluck it out and write it on the front of the fraction to get my final answer. For our last example, compute 2 over 11 minus 3 over 2. I can't take the shortcut because 11 is not a multiple of 2, so I'll multiply 2 11s by 2 over 2 and 3 halves by 11 over 11. Moving forward gives me 4 over 22 minus 33 over 22, which gives me a final answer of negative 29 over 22. For our next topic, we'll talk about continued fractions. Consider the quantity 1 over 1 plus the quantity 1 over 1 plus 1 sixth. Such a number is called a continued fraction because, well, you keep getting more and more fractions. But this isn't as bad as it may look. The way to start this is to essentially zoom in on where our fractions stop and then simplify our way outwards. So our fraction seems to stop here at 1 plus 1 sixth. If we simplify 1 plus 1 sixth to 7 sixth, we get this quantity. 1 over 1 plus 1 over 7 sixth. Remember when I have a fraction in the denominator, I take it out and flip it. Such an action will give me 1 over 1 plus 6 over 7. What I can do next is simplify 1 plus 6 over 7 to get 1 over 13 over 7. I flip the fraction in the denominator to get a final answer of 7 over 13, and we're done. Let's do another example. Consider this continued fraction. Our fraction stops at 1 plus 1 half, so we'll simplify 1 plus 1 half to 3 halves. This gives us the quantity 2 over 1 plus 2 over 3 halves. Now I need to take the 3 halves and flip it upside down and multiply it by 2. This action looks like this. 2 divided by 3 halves becomes 2 times 2 thirds, which becomes 4 thirds. Therefore, I simplify down to 2 over 1 plus 4 thirds. Next, I can add 1 and 4 thirds together to get the new quantity 2 over 7 thirds. Lastly, the 7 over 3 comes out and flips upside down, giving us 2 times 3 over 7, with a final answer of 6 over 7. Next, we'll talk about mixed fractions. Looking at 1 next to 3 fourths means 1 and 3 fourths. This is not 1 multiplied by 3 fourths. This is a notation meaning 1 and the quantity 3 fourths, which essentially translates to adding. So, Looking at 1 and 3 fourths, we see this is equal to 1 plus 3 fourths. When you add that, it becomes 4 over 4 plus 3 fourths to get common denominators. This becomes 7 fourths, which is our final answer. Our next examples will show more operations with mixed fractions. We'll first consider 2 and 1 half plus 3 and 1 third. We'll first simplify this into 2 plus 1 half plus the quantity 3 plus 1 third. These individual quantities can become 4 over 2 plus 1 half plus 9 over 3 plus 1 third to get common denominators. Adding the quantities within the parentheses gives us 5 halves plus 10 thirds. These become 15 over 6 plus 20 over 6 to get common denominators, and this simplifies to 35 over 6, and we're done. For our last example, look at 3 and 1 fourth times 2 and 10 thirteenths. This looks like 3 plus 1 fourth times 2 plus 10 thirteenths. Order of operations says to add within the parentheses first. So I'll find common denominators in both terms. 
which simplify down to 13 over 4 times 36 over 13. Multiply it out to get 468 over 52, which divided gives you 9, and we're done.